Dan Perry here, and this is part 18 of our TCPIP basics. Now that we have finished with the TCPIP addressing, uh, we're going to begin looking at the OSI model, and we're going to introduce the model and just look at a way to remember the layers in this video, and then we'll look at the details of each of those layers in future videos. Now, the OSI model is, or model in general, is a way of representing something. In this case, a process. Models aren't perfect. They're representations. Just like a model airplane is not a perfect representation of the actual airplane. The OSI model is used for us to describe the process of communications in your computer and actually between other computers. In order to describe that process, they have broken it down into seven layers. We'll look at another model later as well that only breaks the processes down into four layers. Now, looking at the OSI model from the top, layer seven is the application layer. And sometimes you'll see the layers listed by numbers, sometimes by name, more often by name, or maybe even a combination of the number and name. The application layer is at the top, layer seven. Layer six is the presentation layer. The session layer is layer five. Layer four is the transport layer. The network layer at three the data link layer at layer two, and layer one is our physical layer. Now, how do we remember this? Well, there are several ways, and uh, if we're going from the top down, one of the ways is uh, just the uh, mnemonic, all people seem to need data processing for application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, and physical layer. Now, I actually like to go from bottom layer one up, and I like to use the uh, mnemonic, please do not throw sausage pizza away. Now, however you mem memorize or learn those layers doesn't matter. The important thing is you know the, what the layers are, and you know how they relate to each other. Now, next time we're going to actually begin describing these layers.